Okay, good afternoon. So thank you for Arab, uh, to ArabNet for inviting me over this year to speak for the third year about what's happening in terms of e-commerce in the region. Uh, as every year, I will cover about uh, three or four main topics. The first topic is to give you a, uh, an idea of the over, let's say, the, the overall global and then regional business trends in e-commerce. The second topic is talking specifically about data that we analyze on, uh, on, uh, on e-commerce packages, whether it's related to our operational data, payment information returns. And then the third uh, topic is going to talk about social media and how that is affecting e-commerce from the data that we have. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch about for about a couple of minutes on all the new things that Aramix is working on to deliver on the e-commerce within the region. There, it was a bit, bit difficult to find data about uh, the status of e-commerce and how big the e-commerce market is in the region. So I thought this, was, uh, this is probably a good representative uh, slide here, whereby in 2015, we're saying, they're saying here that about the e-commerce in the region is about worth $40 billion. This includes uh, this is services and products. So this is not only people buying products online and, and us shipping them or companies shipping them. So uh, about, uh, if you look at the e-commerce element on its own, which is the packages that are being shipped, we're talking about, about this year around $15 billion of products that have been purchased online and delivered within, within the region and Africa. The, also, the good news is that another piece of information here is that it's a very, it's a very attractive market for e-commerce, and this is going to continue. When you look at numbers here, and it says that 25, you have 60% of the population in our part of the world are below 25 years old. These are, these are the buyers. Eventually, those are going to become also your future buyers. So that's a very attractive number there. Also, another interesting number that says that 43% of, of the people, uh, uh, internet users in the GCC had made a purchase online. So you're talking about probably 50% of the people in the region have purchased online. Uh, in, in the GCC, and they purchase at least once a month. So these numbers are, are interesting enough, and that shows that the potential for e-commerce also is, is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. This is a, another slide that I found very interesting, is why do people opt to go and buy products from abroad uh, and get them delivered to, the, to, the, to, to them uh, globally. If you look at the red line, the red lines here are the emerging market economies. So I assume that we're emerging economies here. So if you look at the number one reason why people buy products from abroad is because they cannot find those products domestically. And this is all potential for e-commerce companies in the region to make the variety of products more available in this part of the world. So I would go, buy, I would go to the US, I would go to Europe to buy a product because I simply cannot buy it in this region. That 74% of those buyers do that because of that reason. Yeah, 57% of the buyers would go and buy from abroad because they can find things cheaper. Then you have 49% go abroad, or 50% go abroad because they have a wider selection. This is logical, Yanni. As, as much as we want to have products available in the region, if you go out, you can go to the US and buy from one website or a couple of websites a much more larger variety of products and services. So that represents about 50%. Then you have higher quality products, and then you have the counterfeit products, which is also a pretty high percentage. So these are the main reasons of why people uh, opt to go and buy products from outside of, of, the, of the region. Now, if you look at the Aramix specific, specific data, this is our, the mixer. We've been showing this mixer for the last three years. So what we do is that we take all the data of Aramix. We look at our shop and ship data. We look at our, our e-commerce data, which is e-commerce that is coming from abroad, and the e-commerce that we handle domestically within this region. So all the packages that we delivered over the last year. And we analyze that data. This is, this is, what, this is, what, this is uh, representative of what, what this data tells us. First of all, if you look at where the volume is going to and from. So here I have the origin. So these are products originating from Saudi, going to Saudi. So you have 31% of, 31 of the packages that we delivered last year were within Saudi. 31% of the e-commerce packages within the region were delivered within Saudi Arabia. 29% of the packages that we delivered were delivered within Egypt. So we picked up domestically and we delivered domestic within Egypt. 20% were delivered in the UAE. And then you have, from the UAE to Saudi Arabia, that's the only cross-border trade uh, sector, that's 14%. If you add these number up, numbers up, 94% of the e-commerce that we carry today is basically between three countries, Saudi, Egypt, and the UAE. Okay, so 
It's nice, but I think there's also, it's, it's a bit uh, worrying, okay, what's happening with the rest of the region, okay? But again, there's a reason why those numbers are high. Saudi is a very big, big population, uh, high per capita income. Egypt is, the, the, is a big population, a lot of domestic uh, e-tailers, and so forth. The average value for order, we talk about this every year. If you look at the shipments that move, that we carry within the region itself, the average value of an e-commerce order is $102. Into the MENA, so we ship a lot of business outside of this, the MENA region, but from the West, mainly from the US, Asia, and Europe into the region, it's $139, which is interesting. So what that tells us is that people are willing to buy, is willing to pay more for shipments, for orders, even though they're gonna have to ship them from abroad. Okay, so it's not a matter of they're looking for bargains. Again, this is directly related to the first slide that I talked about. People are willing to pay more because they can find the product and they can find the product that they want. Okay? Another thing is that customs duty here, we, we have to keep in mind that the customs duty in the GCC in particular is very attractive for people to buy online. When you're talking about the high value limit here is about $275, $300, no customs duty. And if there is customs duty, it's 5%. So that is, that, is, that is pretty attractive for this whole industry to grow further. What do people buy? In 2000, I'm comparing 2013 versus 2014. Apparel clothes is the number one category. 20% of what the people buy online is clothes. And a lot of them, by the way, are children's clothes. Okay, so there's clothes, children's clothes. The number two category is beauty supplies for this year. Number three is tools, and number four is shoes. If you look at last year, the number four category was books and bags. It's no longer in the category of what we shipped last year. It's no longer on the top four category list. So that means that people, and I was listening to the Droid presentation, well, our numbers do not match very well, but <laughs> these are physical packages that we're delivering. So apparently, people are actually reading more online. They're buying their Kindles, their iPads, and all their tablets, and they're reading more books online, because that's what we're actually shipping. If you put the apparel with the beauty supplies and the shoes, that also gives us an indication. This is some analysis that we've done, is that the majority of the people who buy are females. Okay, so uh, the buyers who are actually doing shopping online are actually females within the region. Let's walk into the operations and payments. So this is hardcore operational stuff. Cash on delivery, our love topic. We talk about this every year. If you look at the trend of cash on delivery and the growth of cash on delivery, for the last three years since we started presenting this slide, cash on delivery is still growing. Last year, cash on delivery represented 76% of the business, which is fine. We have no complaints. That's good business for us. It's a cash on delivery market, and it's, and it's growing. Okay? But this is, going to be, this, is, this is going to be changing. Why? Because the majority of the cash on delivery that we carry today, it's all of it is domestic. I can tell you that at least 98% of the cash on delivery is domestic. But now what is going to start to see, you're going to see is you're going to see international e-tailers selling cash on delivery from the West into our markets. And if you, for anyone who went into mango.com recently, you can buy from mango.com and one of the payment options that is there is cash on delivery. So this is a new trend that we're going to be seeing in the next two to three years. So you have variety, you have good prices, and you have cash on delivery. So that's an interesting equation there. Payment means use. So we look at our Shop and Jeep data and how people pay for their subscriptions to open up accounts and how, how, do, what, what, how do they pay uh, for, for setting their shipping charges. Look at the trend here. I highlighted PayPal in specific. Look at Visa, how it has been declining over the last two, three years. Look at PayPal. PayPal payments has been, gone, has been going up from 16% to 30% to last year. So PayPal is taking a pretty good chunk of payments online in the region. Who pays online more? So how these people who, people who pay with their credit cards or with PayPal, the majority, 36% of the people who pay in the, who, who, who pay for their shipping in the UAE pay online. So it's a very high percentage. 20% of the people in Bahrain pay online. 24 in Lebanon, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. Okay, and this, these numbers slowly will start going up. If you look at the average delivery times, I talk about this every year, and this is something that it, it, it affects our operations a lot. 
And retailers need to know this, and consumers also need to know this, is that for us to deliver a COD package, the number of attempts, so I tried to go and deliver a package, cash on delivery, and I cannot for any reason, which I'll explain to you, we can consider that to be an attempt. On average, we have to do one and a half attempts to deliver a COD package. When it's a credit card shipment, when a shipment is paid by a credit card, it's, there's no attempts. We go, we just deliver the package, and, and there's no attempts for that. Why? Because the consumer has already paid for the goods. There's no reason why you say, no, I don't want it anymore. You've paid for it, you better take it, okay? What is, what is happening also, a trend that we're witnessing, is that cash on delivery is becoming something that we call POD, which is payment on delivery. So with Sadad now opening up recently, and you've probably been hearing about this in Saudi Arabia, and us by investing in more mobile devices with our couriers to deliver packages and collect payment using credit cards, COD, instead of collecting physical cash, you'll still collect cash upon delivery, but it's, it's a payment. It will be by credit card or by a Sadad, a Sadad payment. So this is something interesting, and this is very important for us because it's no longer an issue of managing us managing physical cash. It's much easier on us to manage a credit card transaction than a cash transaction. Returns. We all talk about returns. Returns, no matter what we do in terms of return, in terms of reducing the percentage, we're always going to have returns, and we're stuck. I think returns in this part of the world, I'm talking about logistic returns here. I'm talking about operations, not product returns. You're talking about, for COD, it's between 15 and 17%. So whoever wants to set up an e-commerce business, there is a return rate between 15 and 17%. When it comes to credit card payments, it goes down to 8%. Why do people return products? Top reasons for it is that 42% of the products are returned. Uh, our, our attempts are, are not successful because there's no response. We tried to contact the consignee, and we cannot find them to affect the delivery. The number two reason is 13% is bad addresses, which is a serious issue that we have in the region. And number four, number three, sorry, is clients are not available. We simply go, and we cannot find the client. If you look at what's happening for us in Europe, I compare this with the logistics, the e-commerce business that we, have, we handle in Europe. We have less than 1% returns, logistic returns. If you look at the reasons why, those, why that is very little, it's because the majority of the orders are paid by credit card. Number two, addresses are correctly st are structured properly, which is something that we have a problem that we have here. Consignees offer proper addresses. Here, if you look at a lot of the addresses that are taken from e-commerce sites are free text addresses. It doesn't work like that. If you want to affect the correct delivery process, you have to have a correct address. And then you can give, you have the option to give, leave the package to give a package to the neighbor. Okay, so this is, this is by offering these solutions, our returns will keep on going down. Another trend that we're seeing is that 17% of the packages that, we, that we're handling, 17% of them are being picked up from Aramex locations. The more we have Aramex service centers, the more people opt to come and pick up versus delivery which is a very interesting statistic, and it's better for us, of course, because it's cheaper for us to deliver for a customer to pick up from an Aramex uh, showroom versus us delivering to, to them. My address is one straight. This is, this is related to mobile. With when we affect deliveries with e-commerce, we have to call the consignees, confer their addresses, and schedule deliveries. When we introduce my address app mobile application, whereby we send a message to the consignee saying, you have a package, tell us on your mobile when you want it delivered and what's your address to verify your address, we convert to 25% of the business. Instead of calling, we convert it to be done on, on a mobile. This had a direct impact on our call centers. We reduced headcount in our call centers because we were able to do this on, on a mobile. We were able to interact with the customer on a mobile. Social trends, quickly on this. So uh, the majority of the requests that we receive on social media at Aramex is from Saudi Arabia by far, and it's growing. 65% of the requests that we received on social media came from Saudi Arabia last year. Then it goes down to Kuwait and the rest. But Saudi Arabia, very vocal. They're online. A lot of requests from there. If you look at customer service requests, Facebook is 94% of the requests that we get on Facebook are customer service requests. So for us, social media is, is probably the number two channel for customer service management in, within Aramex with our clients. Three more slides I have left. Now, I'll talk about all the new stuff that is happening. Clients today, from our, from our experience in this area, clients want their packages delivered on time and at a good rate. Speed is important, but it's not the most important thing. 
Okay, people want to know, if I come and tell a client that I'm going to pick from you on a Monday and I'll deliver on a Thursday, but I'll deliver it to you at 12 or between 12 and 3, they're okay with that. What is extremely important is that they want it on time and they want it consistent. So, to be able, for us to be able to do that, it's all about how you manage information. What we're trying to do is that how can we get the courier that is, has the package and the consignee that is expecting the package get closer in the relationship? And bypassing a call center to manage a relationship or an operation depot. So what we're doing here is we're investing. It's all about mobile technology now within our investments in Aramex. We're investing in both consumer apps and courier apps. Courier apps, I'm meaning that any courier today can download an app on a Nokia mobile, on iOS, or on an Android, and download an app where he can become a courier tomorrow. You just need that app. Instead of investing in a $1,500 scanner, anyone can download that app. And what we need to do is that the consignee and courier need to start seeing each other. So with that app, the consignee can see where the courier is, which is his package. The courier can see where the consignee is, so they can, they can see where the, both, both parties are. Secondly, they can communicate with other. Today, the communication that happens between the consignee and the courier has to go to a call center, to an operation, from operations down to the courier. It's a very long cycle. So now what we're going to be doing is that with these new applications, they, the consignee and the courier, can communicate directly to each other. And they can solve problems with each other. The consignee can tell the courier, you know what, I'm not there today or at this location. Come and deliver within two hours. This is extremely important. Now, with all this information, there's a huge, huge amount of big data coming out of this. We embarked on a very big project with big data where we're going to start predicting stuff. So instead of me going, for example, to Muhammad, I know that Muhammad, whenever I try to deliver a package to him, He's never at home. I will simply stop delivering packages to him. I'll tell you, you know what? Come and pick up from our end. Whenever I go to deliver Muhammad and I want to go and collect COD, he doesn't have money ready. First time, okay. Second time, then big data analysis. We come and tell him, you know what? Convert him. I'll go back to Ronaldo. Tell him, you know what? Souk, convert this client into a credit card delivery. This guy, he's not, we're, we have problems with him. He always misses out on us on, on, on the delivery process. So this is between mobile, big data, major investments within organization that is going to enhance the last mile experience. We talked about this earlier. Lockers, you're going to be seeing here in August, early August, lockers in Dubai, and we're launching across the region. We have, we're installing three of them in the, in the next month, whereby customers will be able to come and pick up from those lockers. We're trying to make it more convenient on the client, 24-7, where you can come and pick up your uh, parcel from, from a locker. Finally, the last slide. We are, Aramix is, you know, we've been in this business for a lot, a lot of time, and we are always, we always, it's very important for us for this industry to succeed and grow. And we're here to support this industry big time. So one of the things that we're going to be doing, we're coming up with a new package. We're coming up with tiers. We'll come to clients saying, okay, if you ship with us this amount of shipments, you'll get this shipping rate. This amount of shipments, you get a different shipping rate. So there will be tiers in terms of volume that they give us. Secondly, and more importantly, is that what we're going to be doing, and this is one of the issues that all the e-tailers have, is that they have a cash flow problem. We pick up packages from COD packages, and we have the money. And it's up to our, when do we pay back those money to the e-tailers? Once a week, once a month, twice a month? What we're going to be doing here is that we will be basically offering payment to the e-tailers, the COD amounts, more or less, when we pick up the packages. Okay, this is going to solve a huge issue with those, a cash flow issue with those e-tailers. And we're here to support them. So we pick up the packages, we'll give you a number, let's say, you know, we estimate your business to be worth $10,000. This is $10,000. Do business with us and grow. You no longer have a cash flow problem. So this is coming in July of this year. Uh, and I think this is a very important move. And Rooney will, will, uh, will uh, agree to this. This is a very important move for the industry in, in, in the region. Thank you very much.